To the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 28 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diet diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the Bright Side at 855-660-4261. If you have questions about the longevity products, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, 855-660-4261 is our number. Likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 855 660 Six zero forty two sixty one is your number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear us recommend or advertise on the program, you can call the bright side Ben phone team at eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. That's eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy. They're friendly and knowledgeable, and they know all about the longevity products, and they can help you help sign you up if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $10 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're interested in joining us on our phone webinars, phone phone seminars, phone conversationars, I'm not sure what to call these things. We're doing phone calls every Sunday night, My, uh, myself and my friend Dixie Sedgwick. You can dial in 559-726-1300. That's every Sunday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 559-726-1300. Our access code is 455-987-POUND. We talked about, uh, what did we talk about yesterday, uh, last Sunday? We talked about the thyroid as well as the Healthy Start Pack. And then uh, this week we'll be talking about adrenal fatigue issues. So dial in and listen up, listen, and we'll take, phone, we'll take questions at the end of the phone call as well. They run about 20 to 30 minutes, 559-726-1300, and then access code 455-987. That's every Sunday at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Okay, let's see. Last we spoke, we were talking about the failure of the... Actually, we spoke to... Uh, if you have any uh, comments about Sonia Barrett, we had Sonia Barrett on yesterday, and we talked about uh, health and inside job, her movie and her book. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear what you thought about that. Sonia is kind of a... She's sort of out there. If you checked out her website, you'll see that she's got some pretty wild kinds of ideas, but uh, her take on health is right in line with what we talk about on the bright side, and I'd love to hear if you guys have any comments. or uh, I'd like to know what you guys thought about what Sonia was talking about yesterday. So you can give us a call, 855-660-4261, and we'll put, you, we'll put you to the head of the line if you want to talk about, uh, about our conversation with Sonia Bear yesterday. Okay, so last we spoke, before we, uh, we had Sonia on yesterday, on our last Brightside episode a couple of days ago, we were talking about the failure of the politically and economically inspired lipid hypothesis, this idea that eating fat, eating saturated fat, eating cholesterol are somehow causally related to heart disease. In other words, saturated fats cause heart disease. Cholesterol causes heart disease. 
Just doing a simple examination of the number of people who have to deal with heart disease these days, which is a leading cause of death and affects many millions of people, and the relative uselessness of statin drugs, which have now been out for uh, probably going on 15 years. Uh, just doing a simple examination with the, the number of people who are dying of heart attacks and dying of heart disease and the, and the uselessness of, of statin drugs, which shut down cholesterol manufacturing, makes it pretty obvious that there's a lot more going on to cardiovascular health issues than just simply cholesterol and that's just simply fats. And of course, if you're taking statin drugs, like all drugs, statins need to be processed and detoxified by the liver. They're, the body considers all drugs, and statin drugs included, the body considers them to be poisons. And these drugs, as uh, useless as they are, statin drugs, as useless as they are, come with a whole host of side effects. Not only does your body have to, not only are they useless, not only does your body have to detoxify and process these things as poisons, but then you got to deal with side effects. You got to deal with lethargy. You got to deal with muscle weakness. You got to deal with brain problems, memory problems. You even have to deal with kidney disease. You even have to deal with diabetes, potential diabetes with statin drugs. You want to prevent a heart attack? Sugar, insulin, B vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiency, cortisol, stress, these are all ways that we can control the health of our heart. Low blood oxygen, make sure you're taking, make sure you're breathing correctly. Bile issues, liver issues, gut bacteria, the so-called microbiome. These are just a few of the control points that affect heart health that are way, way, way more important than cholesterol and fat in the diet will ever be. And of course, these control points, B vitamins, lowering your sugar and carbohydrate intake, refined carbohydrate intake, stabilizing insulin, getting on a mineral, uh, making sure you're getting enough minerals, using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, making sure you're reducing stress. These are all control points that we control. This is so important. You should not have to interface with a doctor or a pharmacist or Kaiser Permanente to take care of your heart, unless you're dying of a heart attack. For simple degenerative diseases, there, it's none of the doctor's business. It's none of the pharmacist's business. This is not something that you're going to hear from the pharmacomedical model. You're not going to see this advertised on television. There's no money in this. There's no money in nutrition. There's no money in breathing. There's no money in probiotics. There's no money in lifestyle strategies. Lobbying groups like the American Heart Association, and that's what they are, they're a lobbying group. They're not gonna promote chromium, and they're not gonna tell you about the sweeties, and they're not gonna tell you to get vitamin B12 shots or use probiotics or eat fermented foods or relax. Activate the relaxation nervous system because they got bills to pay. There's a lot of money to be made. It's not the fat and it's not the cholesterol containing foods that are the problem. The processed fats and, uh, and cholesterol, now that's different. Processed fats and, and heated cholesterol, that might be a problem. When we talk about uh, the importance, uh, the health benefits, the health importance of fatty foods, we're talking eggs, we're talking organ meats, we're talking raw dairy. We're not talking processed foods, we're not talking egg beaters. All of these substances, eggs and organ meats and liver and raw dairy, they contain lots of anti-aging elements, building elements, repair elements. It's the, the wrong kinds of fats. Now that's a problem. The processed, industrially manipulated fats, those are problematic. But to lay the blame on fat and for that matter cholesterol in general for heart disease or any other disease is bad science. The first of the synthetic fats, the synthesized fats, and one of the first of the heavily marketed processed foods, maybe the first of the heavily marketed processed foods that were pushed on the, the unsuspecting, innocent American public was Crisco, which stands for crystallized cottonseed oil. It was a, a hardened form of cottonseed oil. And they marketed it as a vegetable, as if cotton seed oil is a vegetable oil. I don't know that cotton is a vegetable, but that's how it was marketed. And this was the first food product, the uh, first processed food product that was really pushed on us, pushed on the American public. It was made by Procter & Gamble. It kind of ushered in the era of these high margin, heavily processed foods that really can be connected to heart health and other health issues. It was first invented, Crisco was first invented around the time of the Civil War. It was a candle ingredient by a couple of guys named Procter and Gamble, William Procter and James Gamble. They were candle makers and they were looking to, once electricity kicked in, they kind of read the handwriting on the wall. They saw that electricity and the light bulb were going to doom their candle making business and they had all this, all this synthetic, hydrogenated, thick fat 
they decided they would market it as a replacement for lard. And this was in the days when uh, Kellogg's was beginning to become popular with his with his all grain diet, and people were starting to understand that vegetables may be beneficial. Eating vegetables. First Crisco marketing slogan was, "It's vegetable. It's digestible." That's what they said. Never mind that Crisco is derived from cottonseed oil. I don't know anyone's going to call cotton a vegetable. Anyway, Crisco is good for you. This whole Crisco is good for you market, uh, marketing campaign. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacy. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We'll take your phone calls here in the next segment at 855-660-4261. It's very helpful if you'll call in early so we can get to as many phone calls as possible and not leave you on hold, which I hate doing. That's 855-660-4261. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the program, or if you'd like to join the Bright Side Ben team and have me help you build your longevity business, I can come out to wherever you are and do talks. We can do three-way phone calls as well. You can call the Brightside Ben phone team. They can tell you all about it for a one-time $10 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks, get your products at the wholesale price, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. They are at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also go to my website, brightsideben.com, and take a look at our shopping cart. I'm sorry, click on the Join the Team link. You can also take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products. But if you click on the Join the Team link, Somebody will get back to you with information for how you can join the Brightside Ben team. Okay, so let's see. It's vegetable. It's digestible. That was Crisco's first uh, first marketing slogan. This Crisco is good for you. Marketing campaign was one of the first classic successful uh, marketing marketing promotional campaigns for processed foods, and uh, the first time really that a processed food was heavily marketed as being better for us than a natural food. They, the whole the whole idea with Crisco is it was supposed to be better for you than animal products. This was uh, the glory days of vegetarianism, at least the beginnings of vegetarianism, and and then people were starting to get the idea that maybe animal foods were not really good for them, and people were like Kellogg's uh, were pushing vegetable kinds of foods, grains, as being heart healthy, as being uh, body healthy, and so Procter and Gamble, William Procter and James Gamble introduced their, their synthetic product, synthetic Crisco, as a healthier alternative to cooking with animal fats. They promoted it as being more modern and more high-tech and healthier, more scientific than lard or butter. And then, in a stroke of brilliance, a marketing genius, they published this Crisco cookbook and this promotional piece on what Crisco was and how beneficial Crisco was for your health. It's actually, these days, this Crisco cookbook is considered a collector's item in the advertising world. I have a PDF file of it. I'll be glad to send it to you if you're interested. Just shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com, and give me a few days, and I'll, I'll get this out to you. It's kind of interesting, actually. It's interesting how marketing was, uh, what marketers thought of the American public back in the early 1900s, and, and they haven't really changed their opinion of the American public even today, but this was one of the first times that health was marketed and uh, uh, that uh, processed products were marketed as being somehow healthy for you. Long story short, Crisco caught on. Women started using it instead of lard and P&G. Procter & Gamble became one of the biggest multinational corporations on the planet. Eventually, they started sponsoring radio shows, and then they started funding research and paying doctors to push their processed products and processed hydrogenated vegetable oil as healthy choices, which of course they're still doing. They were the ones who instigated this famous lipid hypothesis, the idea that it's fats and cholesterol and animal products are responsible for heart disease, and they were the ones who promoted the work of this University of Minnesota heart doctor, this uh, University of Minnesota cardiologist named Ansel Keys. One of the major forces in the history of the, satur of the lipid hypothesis. In fact, the number one proponent of the idea that eating saturated fats and animal products cause heart disease. This is all, by the way, described in the cover story in Time magazine, uh, Eat Butter. I think it was about three weeks ago that came out, maybe a month ago. Uh, right on the cover, Eat Butter. They talked about the history of this uh, lipid hypothesis, and they talked a lot about Ansel Keys and how he kind of fudged the data and how he was uh, funded by the Crisco people. Of course, today we know that heart disease, which was somewhat unheard of when Crisco first came out in 1911. Today we know that it's risen to epidemic levels, despite the fact that we're uh, obsessed with staying off of cholesterol and laying off of cholesterol and saturated fats and eating these processed egg beaters and Crisco type foods. Despite that, 
Heart disease, which was somewhat unheard of at the beginning of the 20th century, is now the leading cause of death a mere 100 years later. Clearly, Crisco and foods of these kinds are anything but cardiac friendly. And this should make sense, considering the fact that uh, the high sugar content of the so-called Ansel Keys diet, the diet that Ansel Keys pr uh, promoted, the, the grain and, f and flour and, and uh, uh, refined carbohydrate diet that these folks pr promoted, or really are the cause of heart disease. So of course, if we shift ourselves away from animal products and from fats and start eating more breads and pastas, which is what the American Heart Association to this day still recommends, of course, given the fact that sugar and insulin are intimately connected to heart problems, of course we're gonna have an epidemic of heart disease. The tremendous rise in sugar consumption via sugar itself and also via grains is really the cause of heart disease and we can thank Dr. Keyes and we can thank Procter and Gamble when we can thank Crisco and we can thank the lipid hypothesis as well as Big Pharma and Big Farm for that matter because they're the ones partially who are involved in, in, in promoting the idea that we should be eating more grains and vegetable oils. We can, and by the way, grain oil, the oils we eat are not really vegetable oils. They're more grain oils, even though they call them vegetable oils. So anyway, we can thank these guys for our, uh, our epidemic of heart disease and the fact that heart disease is now the leading cause of death in this country. As we've said so many times before on this program, insulin, sugar, uh, refined carbohydrates are connected to elevations in blood cholesterol. This is really the problem when it comes to cholesterol. It's not the cholesterol itself, it's the sugar that causes the rise in cholesterol. You lower your sugar intake and then you won't have to make as much insulin. That, that alone is going to be a huge step towards reducing your, the likelihood of heart disease. That also means you're going to be supporting pancreatic health. Pancreas is where insulin is made, and the less insulin it has to make, the healthier it's going to be, the more resource, resources it's going to have available for digestion. So the less sugar you eat, the, less your, the lower your insulin, the healthier your pancreas is going to be, and the less cholesterol your liver will have to make. What's it going to be? Do you want to poison your liver to have it stop making cholesterol, or do you want to change your diet to have your liver stop making cholesterol. Ask your doctor, what's it going to be, doc? Do I really need a statin drug to poison my body to stop making cholesterol? Or isn't there a dietary strategy that can allow me to naturally and healthfully reduce my blood cholesterol? If he doesn't know, find a doctor who does, or even better, have your doctor listen to the bright side, and we'll tell him. Think cholesterol, think blood sugar, think insulin, lower blood sugar, lower insulin, lower cholesterol. They're all connected. And then you've got the connection between arginine, which is the amino acid that we've been talking about for the last month, and cardiovascular health issues, and arginine and cholesterol. Arginine is a building substance, and it has a major role to play in how we process sugar. It is one of the most important nutritional supplements for a diabetic. It's one of the most important nutritional supplements anybody could take for a lot of reasons, but especially because it will help us process sugar. Arginine is a major player in making the body and making cells more sensitive to insulin. That means you don't have to make as much insulin. Excuse me, increasing insulin sensitivity means your body doesn't have to make as much insulin, and that's always a good thing. Arginine is a must-have nutritional supplement for diabetics and for pre-diabetics, and pretty much all of us are pre-diabetic. No matter what you hear from the doctor, no matter what your test scores say, no matter what your blood sugar tests say, and by the way, blood sugar tests are one of the silliest ways to determine whether you're having a blood sugar problem or not. You want to have your insulin checked. Now, that's different. Nobody ever tests that. Arginine owes much of its anti-aging properties, and its anti-aging properties are legendary to the, uh, the fact that it helps the body process insulin and process sugar. And there's lots more, too. Arginine's got tremendous anti-aging benefits, tremendous growth and building benefits, tremendous cardiovascular benefits, tremendous liver health benefits, and we will cover all of those on our next Bright Side episode. We're coming back with your phone calls at 855-660-4261. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to... If back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. On our next episode, we'll continue talking about the importance of arginine, its relationship to disease, and especially its relationship to what was called at one time, it may still be called, the molecule of the year. 
That's something called nitric oxide, really, really stupendously important molecule. We'll also talk about arginine and wound healing as well. If you're going into surgery, your pre-surgery and post-surgery, using arginine supplements can help you, uh, help you recover, can help accelerate the healing process. This is especially important if you have burns or you have some kind of a plastic surgery done. We'll talk about all that as we continue discussing super amino acid Super amino acid arginine on the bright side. Okay, 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's go off to Ohio and welcome Ian to the bright side. What's up, Ian? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Ben? Doing good. What's cooking? Good. Um, I actually had two questions. Uh, sure. One I think is um, a, a little more important, so I'd like to start with that. Um, my friend, she has um, been having issues with um, syncope. Oh, okay. Like, uh, she, fainting? She's having like uh, yeah, fainting yeah, spells? Fainting. Uh, how, mm -hmm. how old's your friend? Uh, she's 24. Uh, oh, my, good. oh she first, my goodness. She That's... first had it when um, she was 16. She okay, was well, she... Track and, syncope is um, not her... And then then. Syncope is not her. Syncope is not her problem. Syncope is a sign of her problem. Syncope is a, are fainting episodes where you just you go you just pass out basically, uh, and, but syncope is not the problem. And this is really important. You you bring up an important point. A lot of times, what we think are the problems are not the problems. The, the doctors will tell you that's a problem, and then they'll treat the syncope. They'll treat this, the 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 effect. They'll treat the end result of a biochemical breakdown. Nobody just faints for no reason. And if you have fainting spells, that is something that's very serious. The most likely suspect when you have a fainting, a fainting spell is blood circulation problems caused by the adrenal glands, caused by breakdown in, or a fatigued adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are your stress glands, and your adrenal glands also are responsible for controlling blood pressure. There's a phenomenon that will occur to people when they have uh, adrenal health issues, so-called adrenal fatigue, where they'll stand up quickly and they'll feel woozy or dizzy. Now, syncope is like an exaggerated version of that where you instead of just merely feeling woozy or dizzy you actually lose consciousness and you faint so the first thing to focus on with syncope is what the heck is getting into the body that's causing this kind of stress that's causing this kind of adrenal issue that's the first thing to think about and not just syncope but all what's called postural as in po as in your posture postural hypotension which is a fancy way of saying you stand up quickly or you change your posture in some fashion you go from a lying position to a standing position typically and you'll uh, and you feel dizzy or woozy. You know what I'm talking about? Has that ever happened to you? It happens to a lot of folks, actually. Yes, yes, I have, that, I have that, experienced that. And you sound like a young guy. You sound like you're in your twenties, correct? Uh, no, I'm actually in my thirties. Okay, so you. you're in your thirties. <laughs> okay, all right. But you know what I'm talking about? You stand up quickly. You feel woozy or dizzy. If you're working out, if you're one of those folks that gets up every morning to work out, but you're doing coffee or caffeine uh, to get up in the morning or uh, before your workout, it happens even worse because coffee and caffeine can put a, a stress on the adrenal gland. So the first thing for your friend to figure out is number one, it, what the heck is getting into her her body that's causing this kind of distress? Now there is absolutely um, an emotional connection to adrenal health issues and a mental health connection. So she's got to work on all those issues. I'm not going to go into that. But from a nutritional mm -hmm. standpoint, there's, a, there's several likely suspects when it comes to adrenal health issues. Number one, it could be excess ingestion of sugar leading to low blood sugar. Uh, hypoglycemia, that can do it. It can also be caffeine, that can do it. And it can also be some kind of degenerative disease, some kind of long-term chronic breakdown of the body. Now, she's only 24, and that would be unfortunate if that occurred, but it could be occurring. So you want to have her look for other symptoms. Now, the digestive symptoms are always going to be paramount. If something is getting into her body long-term over and over and over again that's causing digestive distress, eventually that's going to compromise the adrenal glands. And then, of course, if she's eating a lot of sugar, and that includes bread and pasta and bagels and potatoes and rice and, you know, in addition to fruit juice and, and desserts, if she's eating a lot of those kinds of foods, that can be a problem as well. So here's some action steps for you. Number one, have her focus on the digestive system. Look for problem foods. If she has any uh, bowel movement problems, problems, gas, bloating, uh, discomfort in the digestive system. Con connect those up to foods. Was that your cow? You got your cow in the living room? What the heck was that? Right. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. That was a, a vehicle. 
Oh, okay. I'm on the road. Yeah. Okay. No worries, Ian. I'm just teasing you. So you want, you want to have her focus on uh, on the digestive system, look for problem foods, and eliminate those foods. If she knows she's constipated or has loose stools or, or crampy or bloaty or any of those things, that's in her favor. If she knows she has menstrual cycle problems, that's in her favor also. And, and the chances are pretty darn good that she does have PMS or some kind of menstrual cycle problem. The reason I say that's in her favor, because as soon as she corrects those, she's going to correct her syncope as well. As soon as she corrects her digestive problems, and her female cycle problems, that will uh, correct her syncope. So uh, get her on uh, all the digestive support that we talk about, the Z-radical, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes, use apple cider vinegar after all her meals. The BioLumin Nightly Essence is very, very important. She should absolutely be on the Healthy Star Pack, which will give her the ultimate essential fatty acids for her, her menstrual cycle problems. All women with menstrual cycle problems need to be focusing on essential fatty acids and fats, fat intake and fat absorption. Uh, the next thing she's going to want to do is use the Sweeties from Longevity or the Sugar Ease, either way. Uh, chromium and vanadium are very important for stabilizing blood sugar, as are the B vitamins and electrolytes. You'll get those. She'll get those in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. She should be sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. And then, uh, let's see, there's a couple other things I want to tell you about. Uh, uh, arginine, which we've been talking about for the last few days, that might help her, a gram or so a day. And then okay. slow, deep breathing is possibly, probably, the single most important non-nutritional strategy for adrenal health issue, issues. Have her sitting on the couch, have her sit on the couch while she's watching TV or reading a book or just relaxing, and uh, practice slow, deep breathing, where you uh, breathe in through the nose slowly, out through the nose slowly, and by slowly, I'm talking 15 seconds in, 15 to 20 seconds out, and most people can't even do that, but, but, but uh, try to get to that point. 15 seconds in, 15 to 20 seconds out, and you do it once or twice a day, and maybe she only has to do three or four uh, breaths per sitting, so maybe uh, six to eight breaths a day, slowly in, slowly out, and that will make a huge, huge difference. A couple other miscellaneous nutrients for the adrenals, vitamin C, very, very important. You'll get some in the Healthy Star Pack. Zinc picolinate, also very important, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. So you've got lots of places that you can work there, Ian, and even if she does a tiny little bit of that, she's going to notice a difference. You said you had one more question? Ah uh, yes, yes. Thank you. I appreciate all the information. Sure. Um, when I hear you, I hear you talking about uh, intermittent fasting yes. and um, and how that uh, increased your life, your lifespan. Um, yes. I just had a question. Um, I used to fast before I started working out, um, but I hear like to build muscle and everything that you need calories. Um, no, so you don't eat calories. I don't know where you heard that. No, well, you need. You don't want to be starving, but you don't mm -hmm. need a lot of calories. You need nutrition is mm -hmm. what you need. Calories mm -hmm. represent heat, and the body does not like heat. It will use a little okay. bit of that for energy. Your cal some of those calories will, get, will be burnt for energy, but not a lot. The vast majority mm -hmm. of the calories that we eat, especially if they're empty calories, that is calories without nutrients, will get stored. And that's not good for, for building muscle. It's very bad for building muscle. In fact, the opposite, okay. intermittent fasting actually turns the body's muscle building systems on. You have a whole gen a slew of genetic mechanisms that kick in when you fast intermittently, and these genetic mechanisms are involved in muscle building. Read the Warrior Diet. We had uh, Ori Hoffmechler on last week and he talked. He didn't really get to talk about bodybuilding and muscle building and, and intermittent fasting, but get his book, The Warrior Diet, or also Maximum Muscle uh, Minimum Fat. That's another cool book that he's writ that he wrote about uh, intermittent fasting and muscle building. Thanks so much for your call, Ian. Appreciate it. God bless you, bro. I uh, hope we helped you out. Uh, we'll, we'll continue taking your phone calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 855-660-4261 is your number. Bev in Buffalo, New York. What's going on, Beverly? Hi. I have a sister who has um, a diagnosis of what's called DPAM. Uh, melanosis? DPAM as in melanosis, as in pigmentation? No, um, the acronym they said stands for diffuse peritoneal adenomucinosis. She has masses in her abdomen that secrete mucus. And okay. Okay. Let's let's uh, stop right there. Actually, the DPAM I know of is a is a melanin. Uh, issue, but uh, mucinosis is, uh, ex as you say, excess secretion of mucus. Whenever you have any excess secretions, you have an attack on the body. 
Mucus is this amazing, amazing substance. It's chemical warfare. It's the way the body protects itself. It slimes itself. The slimy nature of mucus is perfect for sliming away toxins and bacteria and virus and any viruses and anything that the body considers the enemy. Does, does that make sense, ma'am? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we get snotty when we when we uh, have a cold. You know, and you'll get, you can get all these drugs that stop mucus. You can go to the pharmacy and get drugs that stop mucus. You can go over the counter. They've got these silly commercials now uh, that have been out for a while, actually, where, where they, sh they show you how mucus is us, some kind of monster cartoon enemy, and you take this drug, and it kills the mucus. It fights the mucus. Mucus is nothing more than a protective mechanism, and it's a amazing, ridiculously beautiful, elegant. Mucus is beautiful. Snot is gorgeous. How do you like that from a biochemical standpoint? Snottiness is just... A, a, an example of how marvel, marvelous the human body is. It's ke uh, chemical protection for tissue. So when mucus is being secreted in excess amounts, something is getting into the body inappropriately. And which makes sense if it's in her digestive tract, is she's, something is attacking her through the digestive system. So uh, how old's your daughter or your sister, ma'am? 49. Okay, now uh, you've known her all your life, right? How, when she was, how much, are you older than her? Yes, I am. Okay. So she's your kid's sister. She's your baby sister. Is she a lot younger than you? Five you, years. Okay. You grew up with her, though, right? Yes. Okay. Did she have a history of problems when she was growing up? Did she have digestive issues? Did she, did she have problem foods, food allergies? These are the things that you want to focus on. And these are the things your doctor's not going to focus on. So what you want to do is link her, uh, find digestive problems, find, find them. They've got to be there. Don't make them up, but look for them. Uh, gas, bloating, you know, and all the things we talk about here in the program. And then link those up to problem foods. Then the second thing you want to do is start to use nutritional supplements that protect the digestive system. And that would be things like the Z-radical, which is almost like a, it's almost like a type of mucus. That's one of the reasons why the Z-radical and aloe, for that matter, and noni, for that matter, and bone soup, for that matter, one of the reasons why these kinds of foods are so protective for the digestive system, they're mucusy. You could even use herbs, even. I'm not a big believer in using herbal medicine because sometimes that puts a, an additional load on the body. But nonetheless, uh, there's herbs like colt's foot, for example, and something called mullein, uh, which has a, a, a mallow root. These all have mucilaginous kinds of properties, and they can coat the digestive system. And that would be the main strategy as far as supplements go. You can also use other uh, very important uh, digestive system support nutrients like, like probiotics and fermented foods. Get the Biolumin Nightly S. You might want to try Jordan Rubin's wonderful probiotic-rich cheese and probiotic-rich uh, Swero V and Amasai. We're going to have Jordan on next Friday, and he's going to be able to tell us uh, some more about why these things are important for the digestive system. But most importantly, it's going to be to link, look for other health issues, especially problem foods and digestive health issues. And then, uh, of course, using, as I say, all the nutritional supplements. Now, I didn't tell you about the Healthy Start Pack, but that goes without saying. Everybody needs the Healthy Start Pack. It's not specific, perhaps, for specific health crises or health issues, but it is, um, it's very, very helpful for overall health in the body. And that's we, the first thing we always want to think about, even if we're not sick, is the overall health of the system. And that's where Dr. Wallach's genius came in, the Mighty 90, and what we call the Healthy Star Pack, which is the, uh, the uh, ultimate EFAs, the Osteo FX, and the, and the uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine. So have her sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, take her EFAs and the Osteo FX, use noni juice, aloe juice, bone soup, which is uh, we take a chicken and drop it into a pot, a pot of boiling water, turn it into soup, and then uh, also the Z-radical. And then most importantly, look for problem foods, foods that cause digestive distress, and then make sure she's doing fermented foods and probiotics as well. Okay, ma'am? Thank you. Thank you. God bless. I hope that works Thank out you. for you. Okay, let's see. Who do we have next? I think I might have just. Let's see. Okay, let's go to uh, Greg in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side, Greg. What's going on? Hey, 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 man, I've got a, a friend that's got tinea versicolor and looks okay. like she's peeling from a suntan. Her oh, yeah, daughter a, has it, too. And okay, that's a fungal infection that's caused by, uh, that, that shows up on the skin and causes white spots and peeling, as you say. It's a fungal infection. Anytime you have a fungal infection, you have an overgrowth of fungus that follows an undergrowth or something killing your good bacteria. Good bacteria and fungus live in balance. Under ordinary circumstances, the good bacteria keep the fungus in check. The body's got 
got all these checks and balances. And one of the, the good bacteria check the bad bacteria, the good bacteria check the fungus. So when you have a fungal infection, more than likely you have a probiotic problem. And that, of course, means a digestive problem. And that's not, not unusual, as you know, from listening to the program. So just like we were talking, to our last caller, you want to focus on digestive health, especially the, the biolumin nightly essence and fermented foods. In fact, she should be doing that right away. You can actually even use uh, topical probiotics on the skin. There's some products that will do it where you can make your own topical probiotic product with the, with, uh, uh, the biolumin nightly essence, put a little bit in cream and apply that topically. By the way, the doctor strategy for Tinea Versicolor is immune system suppressants because it is, does involve the immune system. Steroids, basically, is what they'll give you. That's probably what they've given her Lidex cream or something along those lines, uh, cortisol cream or hydrocortisone, et cetera. So using probiotics is the first step, and, and then also correcting digestive problems. Almost everything we just talked about with the last caller, in fact, I would consider tinea versicolor to be mostly a digestive health issue. Of course, using, uh, using, the, uh, using the Healthy Star Pack, that's a must for everybody. So sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and using the Ultimate, ultimate EFAs can also help. Uh, making sure that she's... Uh, using immune-boosting nutrients like vitamin C, which she'll get in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but she might want a little bit extra. Vitamin E, 400 international units a day. She may want to try the op uh, Ultimate Selenium products. Selenium also has some nice immune-boosting properties, maybe two to 400 milligrams of the selenium as well. So focus on the digestive system. Treat it as a, a fungal problem that's secondary to issues with gut bacteria and also supporting the immune system with selenium, vitamin C, and vitamin E. That would be my strategy. Does that help, Greg? Cool. Yeah, cool. One quick other thing. Uh, sure. Just a real quick question. When I run into, I'm a longevity person myself. When I run into a person that's saying, "Well, I eat a lot of vegetables. I eat plenty. I'm fine. I don't need. I don't need to suffer." What's the most powerful thing? that I can direct them to. Well, ask them how they know what's in their vegetables. That's the most powerful thing. How do they know what their nutrients are in their vegetables? How does anybody know? Nobody knows. You know, when you read all these, all these things on the Internet and on health shows and Dr. Oz, and they say, well, eat your broccoli because it has uh, 100 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams, or you know, eat your nuts because they have 50 milligrams of magnesium per cup of almonds. Nobody knows. How does anybody know? They test your almonds? They're going by averages and by expectations. Nobody knows what was in the soil. Folks, listen. If the soil is corrupted, the plants that grow out of the soil are going to be corrupted. If the soil is deficient in nutrients, the plants that grow out of the soil are going to be deficient in nutrients. Does anybody out there really think that the soil is not deficient in nutrients? Does anybody out there think the soil is not corrupted? If your plants are being grown with pesticides, if they're being grown with fertilizers, they're going to be, have even less nutrients. Plants that are grown uh, with, with, uh, with help from fertilizers don't need to make nutrients. We talked about that last week with, with Ori Hoffmeckler. So, if you don't know what's in the soil, you don't know what's in the vegetables. If they're satisfied with that, then more power to them. I'm not satisfied with that. I don't know anybody who would be, really. That's what I would tell. Uh, thank okay. you. Thank you so much. God bless. Okay, real quick, if uh, Peter in Texas, I don't know if we can get you. we got about a minute. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, Peter, uh, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, quick question. Uh, about a year ago, a little bit over, my wife uh, got pregnant. Unfortunately, she miscarried uh, about 10 weeks in. And that's when we found out that we were supposedly RH incompatible, that I'm positive and she's being okay. negative. And they gave her the Rogam shot. So what my question is, is that if we, and I looked into it, and there was no mercury in it, according to my research. But if we get pregnant again, I know that they like to give that shot 26 weeks while she's pregnant, and I'm just wondering your opinion on that. I don't know that that's such a great idea. R RH negative uh, blood is associated with food problems, food intolerances. Does she have a history that way? Yes, she actually has a skin condition as well. Too. Okay, okay. So she's got a pro she's got a health problem. She, they're going to treat her Rh negative blood because they're boneheads. That's how the model works. They treat the the symptoms. They don't treat the problem. I, I wish I had more time, but uh, if you call back on our next program, we'll uh, we'll help you out a little bit more uh, a little bit more in depth. But for now, understand that if you have Rh negative blood, more than likely you got a food problem. And and I'm not psychic, Ben. That's just the facts. I, I didn't know your I don't know your wife. So, uh, but the fact is is that you got to take care of food allergies, food intolerance is stresses in the body. Um, and if you send me an email, Ben at KSCO.com, I'll give you a little bit more help. Or if you call in our next episode, we can, we can talk a little bit more in depth. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening, folks. I appreciate all you guys. We will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. Bye for now.